<laughs> Good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you all for joining us here in the lounge tonight with Jazz and T on Jetsons Radio DC. JT Ladies Lounge. I said the lounge. Just in case you don't know, it is JT Ladies Lounge. And we are coming to you tonight on Jetsons Radio DC. And we have a very special guest with us tonight. She's going to talk to you about sarcoidosis. Um, it's a disease that affects many. I don't really hear it talked about that much, mm -hmm. you know, um, and some people may have it and they may just have gotten the diagnosis. Not sure where to go with it. Not sure what to do with it. Maybe still researching. Well, I have someone on here with us tonight who hosts two shows about sarcoidosis. One is called Let's Talk Sarcoidosis and one is Let's Talk Sarcoidosis on the Road, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So she hosts two shows about this. She is a um, award-winning award winning television radio host, right? So let's, without further ado, let's introduce Miss Dorothea Howard. Yes. Oh, in case you don't know, she is on the phone. I don't even know if I said that. Yes, yes. How are you? I am doing well. As you know, I am on the West Coast. Oh. And, uh, you know, doing other things to further, you know, make the uh, show a little bit more broad in different areas and try to get out to different countries mm -hmm. and find out exactly how other people, as far as patients, cope with the illness. And then talking to medical professionals who can actually give us some information on how they treat the disease in other countries. Wow, that is awesome. So um, <clears throat> for those who don't know what sarcoidosis is, can you give us a little bit of background on it? How is it, is it, um, how is it acquired, I should say? Like, what are the symptoms, things of that nature? Okay, well, first, um, let me just say this to you ladies. You are doing wonderful. I love the show. Thank you. Uh, you know, I love you guys dearly, and I definitely appreciate you helping us to bring awareness uh, because this is Sarcoidosis Awareness Month. So I wanted to thank you for that. And um, also, sarcoidosis, it's uh, an inflammatory disease that causes non-cancerous granulomas who attacks, uh, what, who can attack any uh, area of your body. So mm. basically major organs of your body. Uh, and it can be multiple organs as well. Uh, some of the symptoms can be a little tricky, um, especially in my case. And if you don't mind, I can take you ladies a little bit back, or if you have some other questions and want me to wait. No, uh, no, no, Miss Dorothea, you fine because we wanted to, we wanted you to let us let us in the audience know what is sarcoidosis. But we also was going. The next question was we wanted you to give us a background of what. A sarcoidosis is and how you deal with it because we know that you are someone that's dealing with it. Okay, thank you. So let me just tell you and just take the audience back. Uh, in 1984, I was 26 years old and I noticed that I really started having some weird symptoms. And at first, I really thought that I had a flu because I got cold-like symptoms. I was coughing a lot. I had chills and, you know, congested and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't pay too much attention because, you know, being 26 years old, you know, just kind of in the prime of your life and enjoying it. And then as days and weeks went on, I noticed that I had very large lymph nodes that I could feel through my body. Like I mm -hmm. could feel it in my neck. I could feel it in my, my legs and things like that. So I thought, this is a little strange. But then also, as I kept going on day by day, I noticed that it was swelling that I was getting and it was very painful uh, in my joints. And I think the main thing that really kind of alerted me is when I woke up one morning and I literally, literally um, like lost about 30 or 40 pounds just mm. like that. And so I thought, uh-oh, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. So I went to, um, and considering I did, um, let me just give you this um, information because this is very important. I uh, was very out of breath, and that was kind of unusual as well, uh, being able to walk around and not going up steps without kind of getting out of breath. So that was something that was, you know, a sign to me that something was terribly wrong. 
And, um, you know, I went to the medical center that was pretty close to my home at that time, and they took a chest x-ray because I told them my chest was aching and I just really didn't feel well. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when I was there, mm -hmm. I just thought, yeah, they're going to give me some medicine and I'm mm -hmm. just going home. Little did I know that it was the beginning of my nightmare. Um, what happened at that point is they took a chest x-ray and the technician, he just said to me, you need to go straight to the hospital and be needed. And, you know, I was thinking, what are you talking about? He said, you need to talk to your doctor. He's going to call you and wait for instructions. I couldn't even get in the door, ladies. Um, I wasn't in that door two minutes, and my phone was ringing off the hook. And my doctor said mm -hmm. to me, get in the car, drive over to the hospital. I will meet you over there, and you have to be admitted. So can you imagine 26 and getting a scared? <laughs> I'm not sure what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're saying, drop everything that you're doing, basically, and get over to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I went over to the hospital, checked myself in. Um, once I got there, they, a whole team of physicians were there, and they just started giving me just random tests, you know, um, a CAT scan and, you know, x-rays again and MRIs and things like that. So um, once they did that, I was in there for five days, but during that course, the first day, they said to me, I think you have <clears throat> lymphoma. Mm -hmm. Well, lymphoma is a form of cancer. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the weight loss, I think they thought, well, you know, and that's the tricky part about this disease. It mimics so many others. So they mm -hmm. thought I could have lymphoma or TB. Um, mm -hmm. Or they said that maybe I could have lupus. They just wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. So after all the testing, I just remember so clearly that the doctor during the third day, he said to me, well, we took a biopsy, which they did in my neck because my lymph nodes were swollen. Um, also, my liver was twice the size it should have been. My spleen was twice the size it should have been. Um, and so when they did a biopsy, the doctor said to me, uh, you don't have TB, you don't have lymphoma, but you have sarcoidosis. And mm. I said, what? And he said, you have sarcoidosis. And he says, well, we don't know how to treat this. So this is a disease that they were, at that time, 1984, they weren't even familiar with. Uh, so it was kind of like, um, you know, just like a disease that nobody knew about. And I felt literally like an alien because I said, well, is this contagious? Or, you know, right, right. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, we really don't know. So mm -hmm. honestly, they had no clue and neither did I. And so you can imagine I'm with a team of medical professionals who could not give me answers. Right. So let me ask you this question. As you was telling your story and when you said you was feeling sick and you said you had the you got the phone call right away to go to the hospital, you need to be seen. At that moment when they felt that like the way how you're telling the story is like it was like, okay, you need to hurry up and go to the hospital. You need to do this. You need to do that. And that was years ago. So why now is this disease not talking about if back then it seemed like it was so, you know, major at that moment when you got diagnosed, even though, with, even though they didn't know what was going on? Here's my thoughts. And I think a lot of my fellow Sarkadonians would agree with me. Um, first of all, sarcoidosis has lack of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, it has lack of empathy. It has lack of awareness. It has lack of education. And it has lack of funding. So therefore, with that being said, it's not really one of those diseases that are top of mind. For example, just like lupus or cancer or, you know, any other disease that someone may have. Not saying that, you know, um, we, we, we don't want to bash any other disease. Right, but we've right, right. question, why isn't our disease as out there with more education and awareness like the other diseases? And I do agree as far as today, I think people are 
actually still learning about it, even some medical professionals. Right. Um, and the thing that I want to say, there has been some attention in the media with a few television shows. We do have a lot of uh, fellow Sarkadonians who are going out there, and they're putting it on the map. They're out there going on the Today Show and all these other shows and making themselves, you know, known mm -hmm. for us that have this, you know, living with this illness. But it's still not enough, you know. It's right. not enough. And we still need the attention. And I think until we can continue and people give us the attention that we need, whether it's the media, just like you ladies, and I am so grateful that you guys are giving us the attention that we need because the media can help us spread awareness. Yes, yes. Well, we listen, we love to have you on the show, JT Ladies Lounge, at any time for any upcoming events or anything you would like to talk about. So thank you for also wanting to sit down and share with our audience as well as yours about sarcoidosis because honestly, Ms. Dorothea, I've never heard about it neither until actually meeting you. I honestly you know. never heard about it, but one of, one of our audience um, members, which is a, a, a close friend to mine, she said, I'm, I'm going to make sure I tune in. And she's, the first thing she said was, Bernie Mac passed away of that and she has a cousin that also I'm, I'm let me I'm not sure if she said passed away or oh, suffering from it but she said that she has a family member that had that so I like I said I, I never heard of it until actually meeting you and you know that's where, where I said that it has the lack of uh, attention and it's so true because I've heard uh, a lot of my fellow Sarkadonians from all over the world who would say they would go to a physician who had not enough information mm -hmm. or didn't even care about, you know, the information to treat them. And until we can get in at the ground level to make sure that the medical are going to school, mm -hmm. that they learn about this illness. What I would love to see happen is that the medical students who come, you know, who graduate, I would love them to be able to have this illness top of mind. So when someone comes in with a symptom saying that, you know, they have weight loss or they have joint pain or, you know, visibility problems or nervous um, um, system problems and things like that, because mm -hmm. it affects any major organ, that at least they would say, hold it let's check this person for sarcoidosis because they might have that instead of giving us all these tests and saying, oh, you may have this or you may have that because right. of genetics. How about learning about it and then having it top of mind and then thinking that maybe that person can have it because the worst thing that can happen is that it's misdiagnosed and it goes on for years and years mm -hmm. and then eventually when they do find out what the real cause is and then the person could be in such bad condition that mm -hmm. they're facing right. a life and death crisis because mm -hmm. one thing that I noticed some of the media uh, play down on this illness because sometimes they might say yeah you have this disease but you're okay you'll live through it and it can't kill you well that's some bull and because this disease can kill we have had so many people who have fallen to this illness and I'm telling you, it's too many. So therefore, things need to be stopped. And it's just, it needs to be put out there any way that we can get it out there to help save lives. Because people are dying. They're you, dying every day. And you know what? Stuff. And Ms. Dorothy, that's one question I was going to ask you. But before I go to the next question, we have a few comments, okay? okay. We want to thank Hi. everybody for tuning in. Thank you for joining us on this special Wednesday night with Ms. Dorothea. Howard, formerly known as Ms. McGuire, she is here sharing her story, how she dealt with sarcoidosis, how to cope with it, and just putting the word out there for sarcoidosis awareness and to get this <clears throat> disease out there to get more funding and more help because a lot of people are suffering with it, but nobody really knows about it. And or it's, what to do. Yes, or what to do. Mm -hmm. So one comment we have, um, Stephanie said, exactly, I have been told this disease is high in African-American community. She also said, if people pass, 
pass of this if people pass of this disease it normally they would normally die to complications of it and that was one of the questions that i wanted to ask you um when she mentioned and i know you have mentioned before we're having a conversation with you when you said that it is people in the community or people who have passed of it do you think that's why they might not be taking it so seriously <coughs> because it's not a high number amount of people that's passing of this disease or it's not affecting their community like well it's you know ours. let me tell you what has to take place number one you know when a person you know, dies from an illness especially this illness we need the coroner to put down the real cause of the death okay because if they're mm. not putting down the real cause of death and they're saying oh this person died of a heart attack oh this person died mm. of pneumonia and they're yeah. not putting well this person died because they had sarcoidosis uh, pulmonary and they had complications mm. because of the sarcoidosis we will never have correct numbers wow wow so even with with what you said that this sarcoidosis get um misconfused with so many other diseases how can they eliminate so many other complications to say mm -hmm. that this is sarcoidosis like how can you get tested for it see here's the other thing there is no specific testing for mm -hmm. this disease okay so basically they go by um you know they'll do a biopsy of your you know neck some of them do chest x-rays or biopsy of tissues of the lungs and things of that nature so they're, they're going and they're just doing regular testing that anyone else would have so until they also get a specific test saying that this is a test for a sarcoidosis patient mm. to help us to determine what we have a lot quicker then that would be our dilemma now i do know that there are some um, doctors who are out there who, who do a lot of research on this disease, and they said that down the line they are looking positive for breakthrough, and one especially for um, specific testing. Mm -hmm. So that's good news that things are coming. Hopefully they come in our lifetime, but, um, you know, th those, te those days are coming. So it just has to be something that's more dedicated. So I'll give you another example just for medication. They have medication that they go to medications that they keep, put the uh, you know patients on. But again, it's not dedicated mm -hmm. uh, or specific med you know medications for this disease. It's a go to medication because oh, it works well in this disease or that disease. So let's try it for sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. So we kind of feel like the stepchild because you know it's like everything is just oh well let's try it for this disease, but it's nothing where someone say hey. We have specific disease uh, testing and specific medication that's strictly for your illness. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And I'm telling you that you are you are so on point on the questions that I want that my next question that I was going to ask. And okay. so once you're diagnosed with this, what are the medications? What are the? Um, obviously, there's no cure for it. But what so are the medications? What 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 are other ways to go about with you know to deal with sarcoidosis to to ease the disease or how to cope with it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me tell you the medication that they put me on, and it's mainly what everybody is put on if they can tolerate it, because not everyone can tolerate it, so it depends on the person. But I was originally put on prednisone. Again, that's a go-to medication because it reduces inflammation, and because sarcoidosis is an inflammatory illness that can, you know, um, create inflammation throughout your entire body for different major organs, that medication works for me, thank God, but not everyone. So some people, they have another one, met methotextrate. It's a whole bunch of medications that they might use, but again, some of those medicines are used for cancer patients, mm. and it's not for sarcoidosis. So once I said before, it's just it's the go-to medication, and basically it's whatever works for you. Mm. And I hate to say it like that because it's kind of like SOL, because yeah. if those medications don't work, you're SOL. Yeah. And it's also kind of like trial and error, too. Oh, definitely. That's exactly what it is. So mm. it's hopefully that when people are tested with these different medications, that you literally have to pray to God that it works for you and your body does not reject the um, medication that they are trying you on. Wow.
So after all, so after <clears throat> these years of dealing with sarcoidosis, Miss Dorothea, how have you coped with it? What other different mechanisms that you found to deal with versus you know what the doctor told you to do or medications? How like what not to eat, what not to do? Don't vitamins, sh- vitamins yeah. don't stress. Like what have you dealt with to deal with it? Okay, so my case, um, as you know, I've been living with it now for 34 years. Praise mm-hmm. God, I'm still here to talk about it. Amen. But um, my lifestyle, I have made serious changes. One, uh, my diet. I don't really eat meat anymore like I used to, so I kind of um, kind of adopted like the pescatarian diet where it's not vegan, but you eliminate meats and you have a lot of um you know, fruits and veggies and things of that nature. So I, I changed diet, number one. And then number two, um, not all the patients can do this. This is why I said this is what I do. Mm-hmm. But I do exercise. Um, it's a major part as far as I'm concerned for me because the more I move, the better I feel. Um, I notice that when I don't move as much, that's when my body feels stiff and it aches and all that stuff. So, you know, I just get out. I take walks and, and that type of thing. And, and I just do what I can. And mm-hmm. I, I try to do it every day if I can. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is I try not to be in stressful situations. We all get stressed in our lifetime. But I keep mine to a minimum. And I'm serious when I say that. Uh, stress kills no matter what illness you have. So mm-hmm. just imagine stress. Targetosis and stress doesn't go together. So right. I um, try to, uh, you know, to keep the stress level down. And I, I do take vitamins. I take B12 and I take just the regular daily vitamins. But, you know, my uh, regular diet that I have is, is mainly, like I said, uh, it's mainly salmon, um, you know, and veggies and fruits. And I do a lot of smoothies and things like that. So I really do take care of myself. Um, I can't say that everybody can have the same lifestyle, unfortunately, because right. some people, they're not, um, they are in wheelchairs. Some people have oxygen tanks and things like that. So I just say do, uh, do whatever you feel. Make sure you check with your doctor first, of course. Don't just do something um, without checking, especially with this illness. Um, the other thing that I'm, I am weaning off finally, a prednisone, um, I'm, I went from five and now I'm down to three, mm-hmm. and I'm going to keep going through till October where I'm off of it completely. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just I just really take care of myself, and I don't try to stress about anything. I take it day by day, ladies. That's about it. Right. I know that's right. That's I have a comment before I ask you a question, Ms. Dothea. Stephanie said, keep using your voice to educate our, communi- our communities about this terrible disease. It teaches us to be health advocates for ourselves, and it do. And that that's the that's another question I was gonna ask is, um, and I don't know if you stated this earlier in the conversation. What are what are they saying that causes sarcoidosis? Because there's so many diseases that say this is you don't do this, you can get this. Don't do that, you can get this. What what are they saying that actually causes this disease? Okay, so let me just say this. Uh, they say that this is called a mystery disease, okay, because the origin is pretty much unknown. However, when I interviewed um, one of the top chief pulmonologists in Albany Medical Center, and I'm sure people have seen that interview with Dr. Um, Tetson, he specifically said that some, some of the illness can be caused by the chemicals, like the antigens in the air. Say, so, for example, he said that a lot of beauticians out here who works in the salon, they're uh, inhaling chemicals from perms and everything else that they put in um, people's hair. But he uh, said that one of those um, those chemicals can cause people to get sarcoidosis. Mm-hmm. He also mentioned copy machines. Who would th- who would have uh, thought that copy mm-hmm. machine because of the X-rays? Um, he said that they cause um, people to actually get sarcoidosis. So there's a lot of information starting to come out in reference of causes, but um, it's mm-hmm. not, um, like I said, it's, it's pretty much still unknown, but according to Dr. Jepson, he mm-hmm. did mention some of the interview, which people can see, you know, they can go and check out that interview with him. 
Mm. So with this being an infl uh, inflammatory disease, what major organs does this affect? Like how, like not being able to get out of bed, not being able to walk. I know you said that um, losing, you know, shortness of breath. So what other type of organs does this disease affect? Okay, so 90% of the time it affects your lungs. So that's the most commonly affected for um, mm -hmm. sarcoidosis. But then it can affect your nervous system, um, you know, your brain. It can affect your eyes. There are people that have been on my show who are um, completely blind um, from the illness. It can, you know, it can affect your heart. Um, your bones, your joints, your muscles, and of course, in my situation, it, it affected my spleen, my liver, mm -hmm. and my lungs, but it can also, you know, your sinuses, just um, salivary glands, um, you know, anything, kidneys, urinary tracts, all your major organs, it can affect your skin, number mm -hmm. one, because I also had a rash that was on my a chin that I kept getting over and over again, and mm -hmm. I thought it was maybe I was allergic to, you know, something in the air. I didn't know. But, again, it can affect your skin, and some people have terrible lesions from um, sarcoidosis of the skin. Mm. Now, how long do the um, does it usually affect it? Is there, like, a time limit? Is, like, you know, swelling maybe two to three days or a week or a week and a half? Oh, no. Some people, it's a lifetime. Mm. I mean, some people, they go through different phases and different, um, you know, flare-ups. Like, I can get flare-ups. I can get a uh, flare-up on my skin and get a rash. Um, sometimes they say it can go in remission. I do know some people that say they're in remission. It could be dormant and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, it's just hard to say. It depends on the circumstances and things like that. But, no, it's not a disease that affects just one or two days. This is a disease that people can live with the rest of their life. Mm. So, okay, so let me ask you just another question, Ms. Dorothea. So even when you found out at the age of 26, like very young age, where it was like, what? I don't know what's going on with my body. Where did you start at to even say, let me learn more about this disease. I want to, you know, live as long as I can live. I want to beat this thing. I want to live a different lifestyle. Like, where did you start to even start your, you know, for you to educate yourself about it? How did you start exactly. that? So, basically, what changed my life was being diagnosed with that. I also, at that time, I had a daughter. I had a young daughter. And I can tell you right now, what changed my life is looking at her eyes and saying her mother is not going to die. That's what changed mm -hmm. my life. And I knew right then and there that I had to try to find be an advocate for myself. And I preach this all the time, always become an advocate. Do not let someone tell you what you feel in your body. Mm -hmm. Because everyone knows what they feel. And if it's something that doesn't feel right and you're not satisfied with what one medical professional told you or two mm -hmm. or whatever, make sure that you keep going until you get it resolved. So for me, it was looking at my daughter saying, no, I'm not going anywhere. And then number two, I said, I need some answers because this is, this is just really a disease that I feel lonely because I didn't really know anything about it. And I'll share this with you ladies. I met someone at a, a parent-teacher meeting when we both, two ladies, myself and another lady, we were going into the PTA meeting, and she had her son, I have my daughter, and it was elementary school, and she was saying, oh, I'm so out of breath, I have sarcoidosis. You would have thought somebody hit the lottery the way we screamed, and we, we realized that we both had something and didn't know yeah. anyone else with it. Right. So from that point on, we were each other's support groups. Mm -hmm. so support groups are the key mm -hmm. because as long as you're an advocate, you have a support group, <coughs> whether it's your family, friends, or colleagues, whoever, mm -hmm. they can help you get through it and help you to figure out a way that you can live with it. Because I can tell you some stories. Not everybody has a support group and not yes. everybody's uh partner or, yeah. you know, whoever it is, is really nice to them. I've known people that said they got the illness and their partners left them. 
So, mm. you know, it, it's because they didn't want to be bothered. Right. They didn't want to take care of someone that, you know, had a disability. So my thing is, when you realize that you have a disease like that, my thing, my question was, okay, I have this disease, so now what am I going to do about it? I'm not going to be on nobody's pity train. I'm not going to sit there and cry. That's not going to help me. So I tried to find what little information I could, and believe me, during that time, there was very mm-hmm. little information. And when I did take that information, I just kept using it and using it, and that's how I broke my shell. Because as years went on, there was still not a lot of information. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to create a show where we can have a platform and talk about this disease, and that's what I did. Perfect. Right. Perfect. So I'm pretty sure since then, you done had a major, major, major support system since coming out at 20. Okay, so th- this one I'm about to say, I'm about to, I said since coming out at 26. So let me ask you this, Ms. Dorothea, if you don't mind me asking you. You said you found out at the age of 26. When did you feel comfortable sharing that you had this disease? That is such a great question. Because let me tell you, when it first happened, I didn't share it. And I was afraid because I thought I would lose my job. I thought that, you know, it it took me, I'm going to say, until I was in my 30s. Mm-hmm. Because I really thought, oh my gosh, I don't want people to know that I have this. They may, you know, think it's contagious because they don't know anything about it. They may think I can't do anything mm-hmm. or can't work because I get sick. So I was kind of selfish during that time because mm-hmm. I thought, I don't want to disclose this. But then one day I got up and I said, you know what? If I don't use myself as an example mm-hmm. to help other people, to help save lives, and then I realize I do not want not one person going through what I went through about mm-hmm. not having any type of education about it, mm-hmm. and that's when I decided to start sharing it, other than the person that I've met, of course, when I said that, but everybody else did not know. Mm-hmm. And it was that typical thing where people say, well, you don't look sick. You don't look mm, sick. Yeah. So I always think, what does sick look like? Because right. you're not always looking the way you feel. You right, know? Right. But I think at that point, and I guess that's a part of growing up, I realized, no, I have to use myself. I, I said, God put me into this situation so I can help people. I have to use my voice. And that's what I did. Right. And I was no longer ashamed of having it. Right. And I'm pretty sure even what you're saying with having this disease, you said you had your daughter. I'm I'm pretty sure over the years your daughter have even helped you along the way with this this with coping with it. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Um I have great family support and I, I really thank God for that because everybody doesn't have that. And you know, That's we true. sit and talk about it and you know, I'm proud to say that my youngest daughter she actually, um, she's getting ready to graduate to become an RN. And so I'm really proud of her. And she's going into the pulmonary division because her mom has this disease and she wants to find out more about it. Right. So she wants to also help other people. So it we need more nurses and doctors uh, for medical students to do this. Right. And I say that to say because you know how, you you you're you're you have this disease that can probably put you oh I'm pretty sure in the past put you in bed for days. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. say that to say how we can have like somebody that's th- that don't have the disease or that's typically healthy. We can have a cold or have a flu and we can, you know, call on our children or call on our significant other. Can you give me a glass of water? Can you get me this? You know what I'm saying? But we yeah. know that that flu or that cold is going to go yeah. away in a matter of days. Mm-hmm. You know, but when you're dealing with a sickness or a disease that you know that you don't know when it may occur or how long it's going to last, you have to have that support from your family. Yes, and i tell you another thing you have to do, and this is what I always say to people when I said it on my show. I always say, not the word no. Uh, that's number one, because when you don't feel good, don't do anything. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, they have the tendency because they, they don't feel good, but they 
don't want people to say, oh, you don't want to go because you don't feel like it or you don't want to go out. I use my thing. I want to live. Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel good, I'm not doing it. And, you know, because it can put you in bed for days and days. So the thing is, they know you have to be good to yourself. You can't worry about what somebody else is going to say because you say no. You know, know your body and know your limitations. And as far as my support group, it's fine because it's the best that I can have mm-hmm. because they know, oh, mom may not feel, you know, feel good or whatever. So mm-hmm. they understand. But the key is understanding because I've had support group meetings with people where their spouses were like, they didn't even believe them because they were looking as if they felt good. Mm-hmm. And like some people never did were breaking up because the spouse thought they just didn't want to do anything with them. Mm-hmm. But in actuality, they were sick. Right. And they didn't want to test themselves. That was they were the sick. Right, right. What about the age? Now that I'm talking about, is it what's what's the age range to for well, soft? The age emotion? range is from twenty to forty, but now mm-hmm. in some studies it says twenty to fifty. So I was actually in that age range of when range of when it can actually affect someone. However, there are people who have been diagnosed well after the age of uh, age of fifty as well. Mm. <laughs> So let me ask you something. When we were talking about, you know, what are some things you can do to try to combat some of the symptoms of sarcoidosis? What are some of the things you want to avoid that may make them worse? Like foods, um, uh actions, or anything like that? Well, one thing is anything that can cause inflammation, you know, Mm -hmm. and I guess it depends on certain foods that may be, you know, uh, causing more inflammation. But, um, of course, stress, again, because that's mm-hmm. the main thing mm-hmm. that can also cause inflammation. So, again, it's your lifestyle. It's things that you eat that causes the way that you live your life. You know, are you in a stressful relationship? Are you just in a stress or a situation in general? So those are the things that can cause this disease to flare up. Right, right. Whew. I'm wow. I'm just out there. I'm gonna give it it's, to you. I'm I'm gonna give you kudos and yes. high five and all, all day. <laughs> Which is keep so much doing to right. Game. Keep doing what you're doing because um, it can in a blink of an eye. In a blink of an eye, you can go to sleep and wake up and just your Everything whole life could change. Everything is different. Your and whole that, life that, could change in a blink of an eye. And, you know, another thing uh, that I want people to know, if you're right in the blink of an eye, I want people to take this disease seriously. There are a lot of media out there that does not take this disease seriously. And they have people thinking that it cannot cause death. Trust me when I tell you, it can. And those of my fellow Sarkadonians who are listening, they know it can cause death because we have had many people to you know, pass um, pass on because of this illness. And people who are listening in, if, you know, we're not trying to scare anyone, of course, with mm-hmm. symptoms, but if you're listening in and you have experienced any of these symptoms that I mentioned, have it checked out. Because if they say, well, you may have this or you may have something else, ask them, can you tell me if I could have this, if there's a possibility that I can have sarcoidosis? You have to start asking. Right. You have to right. be specific about it, huh? Right. And yeah. I have a, I have a comment. Stephanie said, my cousin said that the doctor told her the disease is 10 times more diagnosed in African Americans than Caucasians. And most women are diagnosed more than men with the disease. It's more women diagnosed because women go to the doctor more than men so i don't know have you during for your during your journey have you realized that do you see more women coming out or more men coming out with having this disease i have seen more women i have had some guys on the show and it's literally like pulling teeth to get men on the show because one you know, not all men, I'm not I'm gonna say not right. all men. But most of the time, you know, our men they have a hard time of going to 
to the doctor, number mm-hmm. one, or even wanting to know if something's wrong with them. Right. And then once they know, they may not want to share it. And that's everybody's, you know, that's their um, prerogative. Right. They want to share something or not about their personal being. But, um, yes, more women, because we are pretty much the type that will go to the doctors, want to do right. checkups, right. want to find out if something's wrong. Right. And, you know, you got a lot of people out here, they don't want to know what's wrong with them, even if they feel sick. Right, 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 right. And that's real. Right. So, Ms. Dorothea, thank you for have, having us <laughs> join you I'll in, join this you in yes. a conversation. <laughs> we don't want to say join no, us, but thank you for inviting us into your life and our audience. Um, so can you just give us some upcoming events that you have going on? You we already know you're on the West Coast, you're doing your thing, you're trying to, you know, on spread sarcoidosis sarc- 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 awareness, awareness yeah. more around the world. So yes. let us know and the audience know. What are your upcoming events and also how to reach you? information. Mm-hmm. Okay, so our next upcoming event where we're filming uh, would actually be in Grand Haven, Michigan. Uh, that will be in June. We're actually filming for the second time a retreat group um, from the, um, with um, Allison, what is it, um, of course, I can't. I got a brain fog. That's another sign of it. <laughs> but anyway, Karen Hands, Karen Hands found it. Um, so with Allison uh, Walker, we're going to we're going to film their retreat. Uh, they had a retreat in Tennessee last year, and we were there. So that jump starts out next um on the road, and then we will start going to other states. So I always say stay tuned because we're going to other states, we're going to other countries, and the mission is to find alternative and complementary um, healthcare options because not everyone want to take traditional medication. Yes, ma'am. So we're trying to find out, one, how people are living with it and managing the illness, two, what else are they using to um, treat the disease, and to provide um, you know inspiration, motivation, and to really um, you know give people a chance to find out and be educated about the disease. But um, yes, if they um, you know they can watch me online, of course, on my channel, my Let's Talk Focus channel, and um, that's how they can reach me. Also, too, we have someone that has a uh, comment if they want to leave, Mr. Kevin Cross, and he said. So this is extremely informative. I was just diagnosed of inflammatory disease, and due to this, it helped me realize a lot more and makes me feel a lot better about it. Thank you so much for this, but I also had a question. So when he pops back in, hopefully he'll pop back in soon and ask his question because we don't want to leave anything unanswered while we have you on the line. And even if you do have a question, after this, um, after you know this lounge session ends, even if you have a question, Make sure you feel free to post it because we do continue the conversation. You know, Ms. Dorothea is always very happy to answer any question you may have. Um, she's a good friend of ours. Actually, we were, she was the first, the show, the first show that we were on, you know, as yes. JT Ladies Lounge. So, yes. and, you know, I was even on her show prior to that talking, you know, health and wellness. So, mm-hmm. um, she's, we're very, very much intertwined. So, mm-hmm. you know, she's been a great friend and we're just so happy that we've had the opportunity to be able to connect with her, to be able to connect with our audience. So, um, Kevin, again, if even if you don't ask it now, ask him when you pop back on, when you like, comment, and share this video, everybody. And um, is there anything else you want to add before we go? Yes. Uh, what I like to add is, again, to be an advocate for your own health. Um, And and let me just give this example, because I feel like sometimes the life you save can be your own. And um, when I went to the doctors, my pulmonary specialist, we had been going back and forth about me weaning off of prednisone. You know, he's a great doctor, and he kept saying, yeah, well, let's do it for maintenance and things like that. And then I just thought, no, I want to come off of this. And, you know, it was just me wanting to do this because I always felt, how would I know if I need this medication if I don't try to come off of it to find out? So 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes people, you know, they get afraid of the white coat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you have to say, no, I don't want to do this. This is what I would like to do. Because after all, at the end of the day, it's, it's your, your body. Yes. And, you know, they, you know, doctors are there to help manage your care. But at the end of the day, your decision, it's your life. You're absolutely right. Um, Kevin did pop back on, so um, maybe I can, I'll read his question. Maybe you can break it down okay. there into terms that we can all understand. He said, I heard sarcoidosis can be linked to, you. is it uvitis, U-V-E-I-T-I-S, uvitis? Uh-huh. Um, and I was wondering if that was true. Currently, I'm being treated for uvitis, but I'm also having other symptoms, but I can't get to see my doctor until next month. So my question is, can uvitis be mixed with uvitis and I've also come up ACE positive also. Okay, now I don't know if it's linked with uvitis, but I can tell you this, it does affect the eyes. So um, whatever or uh, you know case that he may have with, with his eyes, he should have it checked out and definitely go to the doctor because he want to ask them to check his eyesight for sarcoidosis. And that's what I said before, Mm -hmm. if there's any part of your body that you feel like could have a problem and part of these symptoms, you have to specifically go to that specialist and say, please check me for sarcoidosis of the eyes. In this specific um, organ. Of the eyes, yes. Right, 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 right. Well, cool. Well, you know what, Kevin? Thank you so much you for, so sharing much for sharing this sharing information with us and sharing your story that you just had, your experience you just had with the doctor. You can always connect with Miss Dorothea. Her information, it, we, she shared it. We also going to share the video so you can message her. You can contact her if you have any more questions. You can find her on YouTube. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. So okay. thank you, everyone, for tuning in and sharing. Thank you again, Miss Dorothea. Even though you're on the West Coast, you took the time yes, you to sit yes, to, to yes. join the Ladies' Lounge. Yes. How privileged are we? Thank you, know, you so like much. I said, what you're doing i am super super proud of you ladies you are doing your thing you are educating women and men um and that's what i love about you because you're empowering people and you're giving information and education and that's so important in this day and time so i appreciate you ladies and i'm thankful that you are allowing me to be on the show today to continue to promote the awareness for April for sarcoidosis. So. All right, yes, thank, thank you, you so much. And so enjoy well. the rest of your time out in the West Coast, yes. and we will keep in touch. Bring back and, some of that good weather and chat soon. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I will definitely, you will be the first to know when those shows start getting ready. Now. All right, so yes. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day, ladies. You too. too. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Again, and thank you all for joining us here in JT Ladies Lounge on this amazing Wednesday night. We had a very special guest, Miss Dorothea. Mm -hmm. Miss Dorothea, and she shared a bunch of information with us about sarcoidosis. So, in case you didn't watch the video, make sure you go back and catch it. Please like, comment, and share because you never know who you can reach. Yes. And you never know who this may affect. So don't keep all the information to yourself. Make sure you share it. Um, you know where you can reach us at. You have our you know our personal Facebook information, JT Ladies Lounge. You can also reach us at <laughs> you can also reach us at Jetsons Radio DC Facebook page, our personal Facebook pages as well. You can email us if you have any topics that you want us to discuss at T O at T O two with Jazz and T at Yahoo.com. Our Twitter is at TO2 with Jazz and T. Mm-hmm. Our YouTube channel, TO2 with Jazz and T. No, JT, JT Ladies, Ladies Lounge. Lounge. Oh, everything is JT Ladies Lounge. Everything, pretty it's much. Not. JT, not everything, but <laughs> oh, Instagram, close. JT Ladies Lounge. Facebook, personal page. Yes. YouTube, TO2 with Jazz and T. Yes. TO, not YouTube. Oh my goodness! See, yeah. Um, email T O two with Jazz and T. with T O two with Jazz. We're gonna get this guy. Yeah, we are. And After three hundred years, I know because she's the one that normally does this, but <laughs> she is not really feeling well. And I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, get it out, get I'm it out, get it out. But you know what? 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, y'all know how to reach us. Trust mm -hmm. me, we will share the link. We will share the show. Um, again, thank you for tuning in. Please tune in Sunday because we have a special announcement. Yes. But you have to watch the show. Yep. You have to tune in to Get hear ready. that special announcement. We are super and excited. Jasmine will be so much better. I will. <laughs> Look, I've been trying to say short sentences no, all night. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> She's going to feel so much better. But again, thank you for tuning in. Comment, like, share, and we will see you guys Sunday. Yes, we will. Thank you. Bye. Bye.